Hey, this is Steve from Snow Foundry, and welcome back for part two of our Arch Linux series. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install the desktop. If you missed part one, check it out here. Part one covers how to install it from a USB key or CD-ROM drive and do some of the basic configuration aspects. In part two, we're going to go over how to install a full desktop. I'll show you some of the options including GNOME, KDE, XFCD, Mate, etc. And then we'll talk about how to configure a full desktop, including things like adding a web browser, adding a media player, adding an IRC client, adding uh, GIMP for photo editing, and Inkscape for vector graphics. Let's go ahead and get started. So in part one, we left off at the root prompt. If you need a link to it, I've put it in the video here, uh, which will cover everything up to this point. So from here on out, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and add a user. We're going to use the user add command with a couple different flags. Uh, the flags just say dash M is make a home directory, dash big G, is to add it to the wheel group, and dash s is the shell for slash bin slash bash. We can change and customize that all later. Uh, for now, those will do. And so we went ahead and added the user, and now we're going to set a password for it, and just because by default, the user doesn't have a password. So we just need to set that up. Uh, not all users need passwords, by the way. You could just use um, SSH keys, for instance, to authenticate without a password at all, and that may even be more secure. So you can see here, uh, the home directory was created successfully and we're good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install sudo. If you followed part one, um, it's actually already installed, but I added this here in case you didn't follow it or just jumping in. Um, I always use sudo for privilege escalation and so uh, just install it with Pac-Man. So what we're gonna do now is go into the sudoers file and we're gonna uncomment this line that says wheel. And that just means that when we created our user, we added the group wheel. And we're gonna say that all members of the wheel group can run sudo commands uh, without entering a password every single time and can run basically any one. And so you'll see that once we uh, type sudo, I don't have to type the password each time once I do it the first time and that I can run any command that root can, can run. And so if you run the, the who am I command, that will actually show you who it thinks you are. And so you see that when I run it under sudo, it thinks I'm root. And when I run it under my user, it knows that I'm my user. And so that shows that uh, we can get to the super user privileges with no issues there. Um, you see here I'm also using the reset command. Whenever I want to clear the screen or get rid of everything, I just type reset and hit enter. Um, it's a pretty good way to, to reset things. And, and so, you know, if you ever messed up your terminal or anything like that, or you're seeing corruption or anything, type reset and it usually fixes it. Uh, so you see I can't run Pac-Man without sudo. And so I'm going to go ahead and put sudo. And then uh, now I can run Pac-Man. Pac-Man is the package manager for Arch Linux. Um, it manages all the packages and repositories and lets me download things from a uh, a generally known and trusted source. And so here I'm just running the system upgrade command, which is dash capital S, then lowercase yu. And that just says sync with the repositories, go ahead and refresh the packages and upgrade. It goes pretty fast, pretty lightweight, um, definitely a, a slick upgrade process. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install uh, xorg server and xorg server utilities. And um, those will give me a basic X server. An X server is what shows you the graphical interface. So no matter what you do, you probably need an X server if you're using it on like a la laptop or a desktop and you want some kind of graphics. And so I sped that up a little, went pretty fast. On your system, it's going to take a little while longer. But um, once you have that installed, now you have an X server that shows graphics. Now the question is, is what graphics does it show you? Because by default, it's not going to show you much of anything. What we need to do is we need to install a graphical login manager and a graphical environment because... If you just started X right now, it would just be a blank screen. It would show you graphics in terms of it would be just blank. And so what we really want is some kind of user-friendly graphic. And so um, here I'm installing GNOME and uh, GDM. And so GDM is going to be our graphical display manager, and it probably stands for GNOME Display Manager. And that's going to give us our login screen, which says, hey, what's your username and password, and what do you want to do? And then GNOME is going to be the actual environment we log into. And so on Windows, it's kind of the same thing as... Um, your desktop is the actual desktop environment, and when you see the login screen, that would be more like GDM. So I installed that and sped it up again, so it just got, it goes by quicker. Um, one note, if you're running this in a VM, go ahead and install open-vm-tools. This will make sure that uh, it works generally as expected, so it's basically installing an open source version of VMware tools. If you're doing this on your laptop or your desktop, you probably don't need it, but if you're doing it in a VM to test things out, um, it'll make things go a lot smoother and easier. And so from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enable GDM. Uh, GDM is the 
the login screen basically. And I'm just using system control, which says, hey, enable the service and run it. And then I, when I do that, I say um, enable it, which means start it on boot. And then I do start, which means start it up right now. And so there it goes, and I'm able to log into GNOME. And um, I got this teeny tiny screen by default, so it might be hard to see. And one of the first things I'm going to do is, is resize that to a higher resolution to make it easier to see. So there's a bunch of resolutions to pick here. I'm just going to pick something close to 1080p uh, just to make it easier to see on YouTube for people who have higher quality uh, connections. And so I switch it to 1080p-ish. Um, you see the fonts are pretty small. So part of what we need to do is just configure this to look a lot better. Um, there's a package called GNOME Extras. And in that package, it has GNOME Tweak Tool. And so what I'm going to do is install GNOME Extras. Uh, it's a good way to see all the different kind of things that are available for GNOME. Uh, when we install it, it's going to give us a big old list of the things that are in GNOME. Um, so extra, no S at the end. Um, so you see there's a bunch of different programs here, which are all super useful, and uh, you can take a look at them. Uh, things like uh, Remote Desktop uh, is right there. Uh, there's GNOME Tweak Tool. There's uh, Photo Viewer. There's Color Managers. Uh, GNOME Builder is like the, uh, a Visual Studio kind of for Linux. Um, it's still in beta, but it's getting better and better and uh, just a whole bunch of really useful utilities. And so I'm going to go ahead and install that uh, so I can get the GNOME tweak tool up and running, and then we're going to adjust our font sizes. Also, while it's installing, if you just right-click on the desktop and go to Change Wallpaper, you can see that the dialog will pop up. You can browse your pictures folder, uh, set a new background, and uh, there's also some additional backgrounds in the Arch Linux repository. So if you just search for Pac-Man, uh, dash capital S dash lowercase s space wallpaper you can see a bunch of packages to install there and get even additional wallpapers um, the terminal if you don't like white you can either go to preferences or profile preferences in the program and just go there click there click edit under the colors tab there and uncheck use system theme and so here you can go and select one that's probably easier on the eyes if you're used to working on the dark setting uh, so in this case gray and black is probably the most standard one i've seen it looks good and uh and yeah, you can just pick through these and check them out. And there's a bunch online too. So if you're used to iTerm2 on Mac, uh, those color themes are generally available on Linux also. And you should be able to find them uh, using you know, Google for a GitHub and GNOME terminal themes. And so this is going to go through, and I just sped it up a little bit. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and install GNOME Tweak Tool. So GNOME Tweak Tool will help us edit the fonts and make this uh, a little easier on the eyes, especially for the, the YouTube video. Um, but this has a bunch of different tools on here. And so all those settings that people, people complain about and say they're missing from GNOME, they're all in GNOME Tweak Tool. And so if you need to change anything or do anything, uh, that's the, the kind of the go-to tool for anything that's not uh, just by default configurable. And so now we're going to get to our essential applications, which is... Firefox, VLC, Inkscape, GIMP, and HexChat. So all we do is a standard Pac-Man uh, space dash capital S, and then we can install them. And uh, it's super easy, super quick. And uh, I'll just while we're doing that, I can show you the sound preferences too. Um, sound preferences came a long way since people have used Linux, uh, you know, like five years ago. Like Pulse Audio uh, made it easy to configure and and have multiple inputs, and uh, it's certainly pretty pretty slick and uh, refined at this point. And so if you need to do that, just you know, you can just type sound in the search bar and it'll pop up. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add these to my favorites bar. As I do that, they'll pop up on the left-hand side. It just makes it easier to access and uh, it looks a little cleaner depending on what your configuration is. So uh, once we've done this, we need to go ahead and add a media player. Uh, there's a lot of popular ones out there. I think two of the most popular are Banshee and Rhythmbox. So they're also in the Arch repo and we'll just install them, if you're noticing a pattern here, the same way, uh, just through Pac-Man. And so uh, we'll go do a Pac-Man space dash capital S rhythm box and Banshee. You actually don't need both. Uh, you can do one or the other. And uh, both will give you a fairly similar interface. Uh, there's not too many differences between them other than uh, I think rhythm box is probably a little more standard. Uh, comes with known by default, whereas uh, Banshee is based on uh, C sharp and mono. And so it pulls in a couple more dependencies. But uh, all in all, it doesn't really make a big difference. And so... Uh, you'll see the interface is very familiar, and uh, it will pop up in the menu, and you can run it and check it out. and uh, Kind of what you expect, like an iTunes for Linux, basically. And so now uh, the next thing I want to show you is how to customize GNOME. So 
If you go to extensions.gnome.org, there's a bunch of different features there. And basically, if you don't like the way it looks by default, you can go to this extension site and you can change and customize the way it looks or write your own extensions. So most of them are written in JavaScript, actually, which makes it fairly easy to develop new ones in. Uh, so we're going to tell it that we allow it to do this and, and remember. And this is just that if it didn't ask you to allow it, for instance, then any website could change your desktop and you don't want that. And so uh, it's good it asks it and we'll just tell it it can do it. And so as you see, as I click these boxes, my interface instantly changes. So instead of having that, uh, that overlay type uh, 3D menu, when I click this on box, it changes to an applications menu, which a lot of people actually like compared to the, the newer style one. And so we'll go ahead and leave that. Um, I'll turn on the places status indicator. Uh, that just makes a places menu. It makes it really easy to navigate on my folders and everything and see what's going on. Um, alternate tab switches it so that kind of is an old style alt tab. With the new style, it groups everything up. Sometimes people find it a pain to navigate, so we'll just go ahead and turn that one on too. And so you can see how easy it is to customize and change my desktop and to kind of make it the way that GNOME used to be. Um, I can turn on this removable drives menu, which lets me uh, unmount things pretty quickly and just see what's connected. And then I can even like make a window list at the bottom, and again, it's just one click. I don't have to do anything or tweak anything really. Um, I have the option to if I want to, but I don't need to. And so there's hundreds and hundreds of those extensions out there, uh, some pretty cool ones. And uh, like I said, it's easy to get into development, too, if you're interested in that. And so uh, from here, we got a full desktop configured and everything, and it's looking pretty good. And so uh, we'll go ahead and open up a terminal again, and you see that the color theme was saved. And so it's still the dark terminal and not the light terminal. So now I'm going to walk you through how to install different desktops. Uh, as you may have guessed, we're going to install it through Pac-Man, uh, the same way that we would do everything else. Now also, if you type Pac-Man and things go too fast, uh, you can always pipe it through less. So if you type the pipe symbol and then a less, uh, it actually puts it all so you can just do page up, page down, scroll through everything. So in this case, I'm using Pac-Man to search for things that contain KDE. And then I pipe it to less, so it slows it down, and I can search in here too. So page up, page down, uh, searching, all that's built into there. And when I'm done, I just hit Q. And so that makes it a lot easier in trying to figure out you know, how fast is the text scrolling and did I miss something that I wanted to, to see or not. Uh, so really handy, and that will, that will work whether you're on GNOME, KDE, or a command line over SSH. It, it works everywhere, uh, pretty much all Linux systems that I know of. So to install KDE, we're just going to simply uh, do a Pac-Man space dash capital S and then Plasma and KDE applications. Now, I'm not actually going to go through the whole thing of installing KDE because it wants to replace some of my default applications with the KDE substitutes. So in this case, it says uh, it wants to replace the GNOME Seahorse uh, with the KDE wallet type thing. And um, I don't want to mess up my whole desktop for the demonstration on this, but what I will do is... After we're done doing KDE, I'll install uh, Mate, and I'll switch it over just so you can see what happens when you install a new desktop, how do you access it, how do you log in. Uh, but So you just say yes to all this stuff normally, and see, there's, there's what's telling me. It's saying, hey, um, I'm, going, I'm going to want to install the, the KSSH XPass instead of Seahorse. Um, so we'll just say no to that because I don't want to break my desktop. You can see all the packages that are pulled in too. So KDE has, is a fully featured desktop and has everything from its own way to manage uh, settings and networks and sound to its own little games and configs, etc. So I'm actually going to go through a full Mate install because the Mate desktop uh, doesn't conflict with anything that I have. There's a couple of notes right there about, you know, remove this conflicting thing, but that's just from some other packages I installed when I was testing some things. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the installs here so we don't sit through all that. Um, and that was it. So I installed the packages. I'm going to log out. Now, normally this little gear here chooses the desktop. What you'll see is, is that Mate's not a choice there. That's only because I need to restart uh, GDM. So I'm going to go ahead and restart. And now when I go to log in, I click the gear, I'm going to see Mate desktop there as an option. And so I'm going to select Mate, click sign in. And that's a, now my entire desktop environment's changed to Mate. Uh, you notice Mate's kind of a more... Uh, GNOME 2 looking desktop. Uh, it comes out of the same developers that uh, created Linux Mint. And uh, it's pretty good looking. A lot of people are actually more comfortable with it than GNOME 3. Uh, and that's really the great thing about Linux is you can choose whatever desktop you want. And all of my programs, etc., carry over. So if you look at the menus, Firefox is still there, HexChat's still there, GIMP's still there, Inkscape's still there. So no matter what desktop I choose, I can customize it to my liking 
and uh, everything is still there in the same way. So that's kind of the freedom and uh, the awesomeness of Linux. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped uh, walk through Arch Linux, how to install some typical programs and desktops. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button for me. And uh, let me know if you want me to run a video tutorial on a different type of open source or Linux topic, and I'd be happy to do so. See you next time.